the issue here on getting the false positive for HIV. So are we just talking about the, the, the problem being those people, initially you get a pretty big shock, but also if it goes across the whole population, you have no way of a, a real test, one that gets you a definitive yes or no on HIV. Yes, that's right. So, um, as, as it's already been talked about, uh, this was a potential, uh, quite um, an unexpected uh, result, but um, it does make it very difficult to actually roll this out if it's going to give false positives for HIV, and it will put many people off the vaccine, so it's probably just as well they decided to cancel it. So, yeah, we completely understand why that would happen. It's still, as far as we know, we heard this from Brendan Murphy so far, safe and effective. Uh, it, it's actually essentially a side effect that, um, you know, affects a, a testing element, as you said. I mean, if, as a hypothetical here, COVID was still ripping through the world in Australia and we had a 10% mortality rate, God forbid, and this was the only vaccine given this issue, at that point, we'd probably still be proceeding, right? That's how safe and effective it's, it still actually is? Potentially, yes. But, of course, there are so many other vaccines being developed and ones that we know don't have these problems that, um, that we, you know, we might as well purchase the ones that we know don't have these issues. What do we know about why this small component of the, the virus, HIV, was used in this vaccine. It was described as a real breakthrough clamp technology that might be used in other vaccines as well. Has that all been set back or is there still a way to incorporate this? Well, they haven't given out the full details yet of, of why this is happening. But the way it works is that um, they take some proteins from the virus and then they bind them together so that they actually look like the virus, even though they're not the virus. That's the molecular clamp. But it appears to turn out that it also looks very slightly like HIV. So you get this cross-reaction. And because of that, your body can't distinguish whether you've been invaded by the COVID-19 virus or you've been invaded by HIV. So it, it won't stop the immunity against um, COVID-19. It does cause all these problems with, with um, false positives and, and testing for HIV. So it's a technicality, and you're right. If we had nothing else, it would be better mm. than nothing. It strikes me that this is manna from heaven for anti-vaxxers, anyone putting out conspiracy theorists. I mean, if you told the average person a week ago or put out a, a post, oh, the Australian vaccine has HIV in it, people would have said, it can't. That, that, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? This is the nature of vaccines. They're complicated. There are always a small number of side effects, even in the really safe ones. Uh, how much of a concern that this will be misused in terms of uh, people putting it out there on, on social media and so on? Look, it's going to take people like um, your media outlet and others and people like myself to explain to the general public that it's not a major issue. Or there's absolutely no chance you will get HIV from this. It's simply a technical side effect that makes it difficult to roll this vaccine out. So it's, it's not a threat and it certainly doesn't impact on any other of the vaccines. I mean, in, in a sense, there has to be a transparency, of course, doesn't there? Um, but this will no doubt put some people, do you think, off a vaccine? How does the Australian government react? Do we need right now information campaigns rolling out over summer because they don't seem to be out there just yet on vaccine safety? Yes, I think communication is absolutely important. Um, Hopefully Australia doesn't have anywhere near as many anti-vaxxers as other countries do. My understanding is that New Zealand, 40% of the people said it wouldn't be vaccinated. Um, it's in the interest of Australia to get up to about 80% of people vaccinated, which will give us some herd immunity. So I think the government does have to spend money and put out a communication strategy and very carefully explain to the general public how these vaccines are safe, that our own, Regulating authority, the TGA certainly wouldn't allow a vaccine to be regulated for use unless it was both safe and effective. Hmm. We have such high vaccination rates. Let's hope that continues. Professor Adrian Esterman, thanks for your time.